And we speak now to political analyst Lukanyo Vanga. Um, Lukanyo, one of the things that we saw were delays, of course, cut action, marathon debates around credentials. And some have said this is completely on brand and it's the same script but a different province. I wonder what you make of what has happened in the ANC Gauteng conference so far. Uh, uh. <coughs> Uh, good good evening and thank you for for inviting me, Bongi. You're quite you're quite correct. The usual afflictions um, of the ANC that have become symptomatic of ANC conferences. You get the disputed branches. You get the delayed uh, conversations and debates around credentials. You get the token. Um, urgent court application that fails at the last minute and it's also lodged at the last minute. You get a failed attempt at a settlement between the warring um, factions that are contesting and vying for power. Uh, so we've seen all of those things in, in, this, um, in this ANC conference in Gauteng. A mirror image, like uh, Sam Kelly has said, of the Eastern Cape where a lot of time was spent on credentials and not enough time was spent on policy discussions and therefore leading to what we're going to see as a bankruptcy in the political content of the ANC because they don't they have not invested enough time in their conferences to thoroughly debate their policy positions and the political um, content of what the organization is going to be. So they might elect leadership, but they won't have any political program to give that leadership. And especially then when you look at the fact that the, the, you know, the policy documents have now been made public, there's a lot that is going on um, in the country. And I, I'd like to bring it to the province of Gauteng, um, you know, currently as well. The fact that they've not even broken out to commissions and they're now deciding whether or not to do this at a later stage. It begs the question then, should these still be called provincial conferences or simply elective conferences? Well, the, the elective conferences of, of the ANC, um, they had the issue of elections as a one day, you know, um, item that they have. However, we've seen that there's an intense amount of contestation that now goes and has characterized the ANC leadership contest. And when that much, you know, uh, vested interest goes into this, it has, they've allowed it as the ANC to you know, so, sort of circumvent everything else that is uh, should be characteristic of a policy of sorry of a conference of the ANC. Mm. So when when these things happen, we can see that there's a failure of leadership to direct the conference in a way that they're able to cover the basics, cover the policy discussions, and then as a by the way, elect the people that are going to carry the program, but they don't focus enough on the program, the political program that the people that they're electing are supposed to implement. So the suggestion that they should have special conferences and special, um, you know, NGCs, it's just them, um, you know, compounding the problems that they have. They need to show leadership and be very stern and firm in the way in which they run their conferences and be realistic in the way that they run the conferences. Uh, just for, as a quick example, mm. they allocated one hour in their, in their program for the issue of credentials. It's unrealistic when you plan your, your conference like that because you know very well that credentials don't take an hour um, to debate and, and to resolve. So why do you plan it for just an hour? It's a failure of leadership on the part of the ANC. Were you surprised by the court action yesterday? Uh, sorry, uh, you cut there. Were you, by? were you surprised by the court action yesterday? No, 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 not really. And also not surprised at the outcome because you can't, um, you know, uh, forum shop when you try and take your matters to the conference floor and you fail, then you try and go to the court at the last minute. You will fail to meet the urgency question. And if you're unable to get past that hurdle, then you won't, you won't be able to, you know, get the, the urgent interdicts and, and relief that you seek from the courts. Not surprised at all and also not surprised at the outcome that it was dismissed with costs. And and when we look at the, you know, the fierce battle between Lebohang Maile and uh, Banyaz Ali Sufi, some have likened it to that moment in 2018 when they were battling it out for the deputy, um, you know, chair position. I'm keen to hear from you because there was that talk of a compromise somewhat, um, you know, discussions that we understood to be taking place behind the scenes. We do now understand they've fallen flat. How do you see this one playing out? 
I think it, it's it's unreasonable for them to expect Lebuhang Maile to again, you know, sacrifice himself, you know, for the good of the organization. I think they've asked him to do this one too many times. They asked him to do it in the ANC Youth League um, when Julius Malema was standing for that position. They asked him again in 2018 um, when Lesofi came in and took the position of deputy uh, provincial chairperson. So they've asked him one too many times, and I don't think he was willing this time around to sacrifice himself. I think he felt it's 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 now an opportunity for someone else to sacrifice, you know, uh, for a change and not to be him. So there's fierce contestation there. And I think, you know, putting my head on the block, that Maile has a lot of politically um, skilled people that are undertaking his lobby. The, the numbers on the conference floor might not reflect that, but I think he's going to come out tops on this one. It's just an inkling that I have. And, you know, also looking at that, at the back of what you've just said, the person that emerges here, um, you know, not only, of course, as chair, but we look, let's look at the top five as well. These individuals not only have the responsibility of uniting the ANC, but would you say they also need to somewhat be cognizant of the fact that they need to have a tight grip on the province of Gauteng that also looks like it's slipping through their fingers fast? The leadership that is going to be elected here, I think they need to put in place what I would call a recovery plan. And that's a recovery plan for when they eventually lose power in 2024. They need to look at how they regain power in 2029 or 2034. If their agenda is going to be to retain power in 2024, I think they'll be very short-sighted because the writing is really on the wall on that one. ANC is going to lose Kauteng. And I think everyone um, must just come to accept that inside of the ANC. What they need to do is to have a recovery plan that gives them enough time and space to be able to put together um, interventions within the ANC see that make sure that as early as 2029 they're able to recover Gauteng or 2034 they're able to recover Gauteng. Failure to do that and be short-minded and think that in the next uh, year and a half that they have left they can be able to retain uh, Gauteng as a province then it would be a uh, game over for um, the ANC in Gauteng. Look, I appreciate your insights as we look into this one. Let's see if you are right as you've put your mouth where your, your money is as far as the chairpersonship is concerned. So let's see then how that plays out. That is political analyst Lukanyo Vanga. On the other side of this, we have a conversation that looks at state security. Of course, one of the big issues when you look at the Uzonda Commission's report.